Tonight's story is called Zombie Juice, written by Raven Crow from r slash no sleep. I was a bit of a troublemaker in elementary school. Not as bad as some of the real problem kids, but I definitely used to enjoy pushing my teacher's buttons. Up until fifth grade, I was a regular at the principal's office. Mrs. Kendall straightened me out though. I hadn't taken a step out of line in the past 10 years, because even though I know that Mrs. Kendall is gone now, the memories of how close I came to being a zombie stay with me. Mrs. Kendall was new at the school when I began fifth grade. She was pretty nice, but she was very strict and had little tolerance for wise asses like myself. The first day of class, she put a big poster on the wall with everybody's name on it. There was a picture of a baseball pitcher in the corner, and written across the top in her big curly letters were the words, three strikes and you're out. I don't like to punish people unfairly, so everyone gets the same number of chances, Mrs. Kendall explained, smiling around the room at each of us. Everyone has three chances. If you do something bad, I'm going to put a strike next to your name. You won't be punished until you get three strikes, but don't take your strikes lightly. I don't want any of you to have to find out what happens when you get to three strikes. With that, she began the first day of school getting to know each other activities. I don't think many people took her strike speech very seriously. She was so nice and young. She wasn't exactly intimidating. I remember Noah, the biggest jerk in class, rolling his eyes and flipping her off onto the table. I bet that would have earned him his first strike if she had seen it. Noah earned his first strike soon enough, though. We only made it two weeks into school before Noah decided it would be funny to glue Susan's long ponytail to the back of her chair. To his credit, it was pretty funny. She couldn't get out of the chair, and Mrs. Kendall had to cut her off her hair with scissors. Susan went home early, and when she came in with her hair cut really short the next day, a bunch of us teased her for looking like a boy. Poor Susan. Anyway, that was Noah's first strike. By Halloween, Noah got his third strike. Mrs. Kendall told him he would have to stay after school for his punishment. Noah smirked. Mrs. Kendall didn't realize how much he was getting away with. Any other teacher would have sent him to the principal's office 20 times by now, and all Mrs. Kendall was doing was making him take the late bus. As the rest of us left for the day, I remember seeing Noah sitting at his desk with his head down at pretend penance. The next day, Noah was a zombie. From the first time I got in class in the morning, Noah didn't say a word. He just sat at his desk, jaw slightly agape, staring straight ahead of him. Same as the next day and the day after that, he was gone. Noah was in foster care, and word was his foster family had got spooked by his weird behavior and sent him on his way. That's when the rumors about Mrs. Kendall started. Vincent was really into horror movies, so naturally, he was the first to suggest that Noah had been turned into a zombie. If Noah was a zombie, why didn't he eat anyone's brains? Susan argued. Yeah, it was more like he didn't have a brain. However, it was the best explanation we could come up with, so the zombie theory stuck. The bigger question was what Miss Kendall had done to him. Max claimed he had seen Mrs. Kendall bite Noah after school. Bull spit, Tommy said. That would mean that Mrs. Kendall was a zombie too. Mrs. Kendall isn't a zombie. She's too smart and pretty said Andy. Ooh, Andy likes Mrs. Kendall, we all said in chorus, and Andy flushed. I know what happened, Veronica boasted. I saw a big jar of icky green stuff in Mrs. Kendall's fridge. It was zombie juice. I bet she injected it into Noah and turned him into a zombie. This theory also stuck. At recess, we pretended to inject each other with zombie juice, and we all stumbled around the playground a horde of undead ten-year-olds. A week before Christmas, Andy got his third strike. This was just a few days after I got my second. Most of the kids in the class had at least one strike by now, except for the real goody two-shoes like Susan. Hey Andy, I teased during recess. I bet you're excited to stay after class with Mrs. Kendall. Hey Andy, are you going to make out with her? said Christian. This generated a chorus of ooh. Andy flushed and stomped away from the rest of us. The next day, Andy was a zombie. We thought the zombie juice was so funny before, but now the humor was gone. None of us had liked Noah much, 
but Andy was our friend. Now, even though he was still sitting in class with us, Andy was gone. His parents pulled him out of class just a few days before Christmas break. I heard from his best friend Tommy that his parents were going to take him to the doctor. Well, I didn't need a medical degree to tell him that there was something wrong with Andy. Mrs. Kendall had turned him into a zombie, plain and simple. School started up again in January, and with the thrill of Santa, most of us just completely forgotten about our poor old friend, Andy. Classes resumed as normal, and the only person who continued to be gloomy was Tommy. The day I remember for the rest of my life is the day the police came for Mrs. Kendall. We had been back in class for a week when the doctors discovered what was wrong with Andy. We had been just let out for recess when the police approached Mrs. Kendall, who was monitoring us from a bench by the swings. After a brief confrontation, the whole class watched in awe as they cuffed her and led her to the back of the police car. The principal led us inside, where he explained to us that we would be having a substitute teacher for the rest of the year. I learned more from eavesdropping my parents when I got home. After several visits from the neurologist, Andy's parents were informed that the cortical tissue on the prefrontal cortex of his brain had been severed. There were also several gouges penetrating his thalamus, and there was bruising in his right eye socket. That was the day I learned the word lobotomy. After a bit of an investigation, the police obtained a warrant and searched Mrs. Kendall's property. They found an ice pick in the trunk of her car. They arrested her later that day. If it wasn't for the police coming that day, I wouldn't be able to tell you my story. I don't know what happened to Noah, but Andy lives in a group home for the mentally disabled. I used to be a wise ass when I was a kid, but now every time I so much as think of breaking a rule, I picture myself in Andy's place. I constantly think about how close I came to being another one of Mrs. Kendall's zombies. The day the police arrested Mrs. Kendall was the day I had gotten my third strike. I'm not gonna lie, stuff like that really freaks me out. I got five kids and four of them are in school and I, I, I'm I, not gonna pretend like I don't get a little worried about um, the teachers every once in a while, you know what I mean? You, you can only really know someone so well, so stories like that don't <laughs> don't help to make me feel any better about that. But I did enjoy the story. Um, I appreciate the author for writing this, and um, I hope you guys enjoyed it too. So I'll talk to you guys next time, and don't forget to always face your fears.